Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. Doing a road marathon on November or in November, how can I calculate what my pace should be uh, for that race itself? So this is a great question. So marathon marathon pacing is going to be something that a lot of people are going to find themselves in a moderate intensity framework. So if we think of things that are like at or below your aerobic threshold as kind of easy paces, and then things that get past your lactate threshold and up into like your VO2 max or overspeed training and things like that, we're looking at things that are like kind of in the hard category more or less. So most marathoners are going to fall somewhere between their aerobic threshold and their lactate threshold on race day. So for some extra information, for those of you unfamiliar with what those are, if you think of your aerobic threshold, that's an intensity that you should be able to sustain for a few hours. It's it's a pretty easy pace relative to the things that come after it. Uh it's a pace that you can likely carry a conversation without too much trouble. You shouldn't be gasping for air after a few words at this pace. Like I said, it should feel like you can do it for quite some time. Uh, it's oftentimes going to be like at, or maybe just below about 80% of your max heart rate. So it's going to, your marathon pace in a lot of cases is going to be a little bit faster than that. Then we have your lactate threshold, which for most runners is going to be an intensity that they can sustain for about 60 minutes in an all out race day type setting. So this intensity is quite a bit faster than what people are going to be able to sustain for a marathon. There are some caveats here and it comes with development. If you decide to focus very heavily on developing your aerobic threshold, that line between your aerobic threshold and your marathon pace may tighten up a fair bit. Now, with proper training, you would likely develop that thoroughly and have it get quite close, but then introduce some workouts that are a little bit faster than that, closer to what your marathon potential pace is. And that specific training will likely improve your marathon pace with some work and practice and therefore further separate it from your aerobic threshold. On the other end of the spectrum, if we're looking at your lactate threshold, this kind of follows the same logic to some degree. If you really, really develop that intensity, you can find yourself in a situation where you can get closer to it with your marathon pace, but that's going to be a lot more applicable for like professional Olympic caliber marathoners where we see some like low two hour marathoners be able to get in the mid 90% of their lactate threshold for two plus hours, which when you think about that intensity being on average, about a 60 minute all out effort is pretty insane to consider, but those are extremes. So let's not hyper-focus on those too much. Generally speaking, we want to think of marathon pace for a lot of folks is going to be in that moderate intensity, somewhere between their aerobic threshold and their lactate threshold. And The longer it takes you to finish the marathon, likely the closer you're going to be to your aerobic threshold and the quicker you're able to finish a marathon, likely the closer you're going to be to your lactate threshold. And that just makes sense from the duration standpoint, where if we're looking at a duration that is, uh, that is fast enough that it would be like a 60 minute all out effort, the sooner you're done, the closer to that you're going to be in kind of the reverse for the, for the aerobic threshold side of that. Uh, But for getting started out, I think there are some good tools you can use to kind of ballpark these figures. So you can kind of start training and tease out over the course of your plan, exactly what you should target on race day. So one that I really like actually is based off of Jack Daniels V dot concept, or he has this chart that helps you kind of predict workout paces, race paces when you have some data, but not all the data. So basically, if you have some precedent or something in close proximity to your training plan, where you know, like your 5k pace, your 10k pace, your half marathon pace, or some of these other distances, if you have that data, you can plug that into his chart and get an idea of what they would expect you to be able to do for a marathon, and then have that kind of be your starting point for your goal marathon pace. For those of you who want to access that very easily, there's actually a free app that you can get on the app store just called V.calculator. 
the DOT calculator. You can download that. You just can plug in, like I said, like your 5K PR or 5K time, and that will project approximately what you should suspect to be able to do for a marathon. Now, as you can probably imagine, the further away you get from the actual distance you're trying to predict, the less accurate it's likely going to be. So if you have like a mile time or something like that, and you're projecting that up to a marathon, it's going to get a little more dicey in terms of how accurate it is versus say, if you have recently like raced an all out half marathon, in which case you can likely get a lot closer to predicting what your marathon potential is. So I like to use those sometimes as starting points if you have them. So then you can get into your training. And then when you do get to the point where you start practicing marathon pace work, you can start playing around with how that feels and tease out if you think that's sustainable. So let's say you're targeting a three hour marathon and you start doing some workouts where you're doing goal marathon pace for that three hour finish for 30 minutes. If that 30 minutes feels really unsustainable for three hours early on, you can stay the course for a while and possibly see enough improvements where it becomes sustainable. But if you're getting kind of deep into your plan and your marathon pace works, marathon pace workouts are feeling like there is going to be very difficult you for to extrapolate those into the full distance. You might want to kind of re reconsider what your goal time is. Same on the other side, if it feels like this feels way too easy. I feel like I could easily do this for the length of time that I'm planning on finishing at, you know, you might want to look at that pace as a little conservative and consider possibly getting a little more aggressive or at least deciding at certain points of the race, if you should maybe speed up and hunt down a negative split or something like that on race day. But what I think works the best, once you kind of get deep into the plan, a really well-structured marathon training plan is likely going to have a long run that develops out pretty close to race distance. Now, people who are new have never run a marathon before, maybe doing a little lower volume. They're a little newer to running. They're going to be a little further away, but most marathon plans, even at the beginning stage, are going to get 14, 15, 16 mile long runs built in. So you're starting to get up there in distance and covering you know roughly two thirds of the race distance. And you can get some information from that based on how you kind of feel at the end of that. But if you want to take that another level, a well-structured marathon plan is also going to have embedded in those long runs, since those are the most specific workouts to your marathon distance in terms of time, you can embed some goal marathon pace work within that. So let's say you're new to marathons and you're targeting a build up to 16 miles in your long run as the furthest you're going to run. Your final few long runs, it may not hurt to put, say, a portion of that, maybe five or six miles at goal marathon pace. So you have an opportunity kind of near the end of that long run to shift gears to whatever that pace is and get an idea of how that pace feels when you're maybe a little more tired due to the length of the long run and any of the training that you had done prior to that, that has you at a point where you're not 100% fresh like you would be at the start on race day. Uh, if you're a little further along and you're say have done a, multiple marathons, you're building up and you're getting up closer to say 20, 21, 22, or maybe even very close, if not at the race goal distance of 26.2 miles, you have a little bit of a bigger opportunity to practice this. You can do the same thing, but closer to race distance where, you know, now maybe you have a scenario where you do a 22 mile long run and you had 10 miles of it at goal marathon race or something pace or something like that. If you have that information, you just need to be honest with yourself and, and think like, is this sustainable? Is this way off base? Is this something that I can't even begin to wrap my head around? You'll you'll be able to, to kind of sense that a little bit and then use these other data points to also help kind of close the gap a little bit. So does the Jack Daniels B dot calculator have that pace? Does that pace feel... Uh, or match, match what you're seeing in training. When you have more things pile up that match that this is something you could you could achieve, then you're going to be closer to accurately predicting it. And what I usually tell folks too is if you're really worried, if this is going to a point of anxiety, go with a little bit more of a conservative approach with your pacing target because if it feels super chill and you're say 
halfway through the marathon, you're likely much better off recognizing that then and speeding up than you are taking a little bit more of an aggressive approach and finding yourself halfway through the marathon, realizing i am been going too fast. Now I'm going to have to just really fight the wheels coming off. You're likely going to give back more time by that second that second scenario than, than you would the first scenario. And sometimes that first scenario will put you in a position where you realize what your potential is a little bit better because you're running strong into the finish. And then you have a lot better accurate uh, potential time in order to build off for future events. All right. So if I missed anything in that question, people want me to tease out, feel free to shoot me a note, happy to address it further or go down a different angle with that kind of same topic. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. 